This Jeep Wrangler right here behind me is ready to go on the trail to hit some long expeditions. Today in this video, we're gonna meet with the owner, we're gonna take a close up look at it, and we're gonna find out why he built it the way he did. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I'm here with my good buddy Josh. Josh, dude, thanks for getting up early in the morning, man, and coming out here. Anything for you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wheeling with Josh for about a year now, and today we're gonna take a good look at your Jeep. I've seen this thing in action, out at camp. Uh, man, this is an awesome Jeep, and I know you are really passionate about it. Um, but let's, before we talk about the Jeep, there's a couple things that I wanna talk about. So we've been wheeling together for a little while, been out on some good adventures. Yeah. What's been your favorite one that we've been out on? My favorite trip would be Sierras when we went up to 395 yeah. and uh, got up to elevation, saw some snow randomly. Um, it, just, it was a great trail and the views were amazing. It was beautiful yeah. up there. Yeah, really the was. campsites were oh. epic, yeah. right? And the first trip that you and I ever did together was the Mojave, right? Yep, Mojave Road in January of this year, I think, 19. Yeah, it's been, yeah. It's been about 12 months. Yep. So, and this thing was pretty much built pretty close to what it is right now back there's then been, right yeah there's been a few additions but it's pretty much the way it was yeah now listen uh the jeep's a 2018 it's a year and a half old yeah how long was it after you bought the jeep before you did your first mod on it um less than 30 days <laughs> so you knew going in that you were going to do some stuff to this i did i i knew i wanted to get into overlanding a little bit i didn't know it was going to be this yeah but yeah. Well, this has turned out pretty awesome, dude. I, yeah. I love it. I mean, it's one of the best overlanding JLs out there. I think you've done a great job. Uh, the cool thing is, is you got this early on, so you've really yeah. had time to kind of change some things out and figure out what your likes and dislikes are, and we'll get into some of that. Um, what was, let's talk about this though. What was the first mod you did on the Jeep? The very first mod was uh, this front bumper. Okay. Yeah. Why did you go with this bumper? <clears throat> It was the only one available at the time. <laughs> However, I will say Poison Spider had a great reputation. Uh, I knew you had one on your JK, yeah. and so I, I, I knew I wouldn't go wrong, yeah, and yeah. they were at the first to market. Right, okay, yeah, you got this, and there wasn't a lot to choose from. Now the, the yeah. manufacturers are coming out with all kinds of stuff for it. So, all right, well, what do you say we dig in let's and show these guys what you've got here? So let's talk about the bumper. What bumper is this? So this is the Poison Spider Bruiser bumper. And I went ahead and got the optional skid plate because of the front axle disconnect on the JLs that they yeah. came with. Um, so I, I included that and I liked it because it was the stubby. Um, I wanted a bar up front to be able to mount lights or something. And uh, it gave me the option to put larger tires on pretty much right away with the Rubicon model. Yeah. No rubbing when you're turning yeah. it. Zero. Stuff, yeah. right. And what I like about this bumper for me personally is the winch is lowered into the bumper. It's not sitting on top of it. What winch are you using? This is the Warren Platinum 10S uh, with the synthetic rope and um, it barely fits here. It's a super tight fit, but it does fit and it works great. Okay, and this is a 10K or 12K? It's a 10K. 10K, synthetic line. Yep. Uh, and you got the Factor 55 lead up here. I do. Um, now this winch is pretty new. It's only a year and a half old. Has it gotten much use? Very little. Okay. But not on trail. Not on trail. Well, you know, sometimes you got to use it for what you need it for. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we do have some lights mounted on the bumper. Uh, tell us what you got up here. This is the KC Flex Lights. Uh, it is a 20 inch bar and I went ahead and put the amber covers on it. I use this mainly for dust uh, when we're out on the trails. Uh, amber, be able to see through the dust, things yeah. like that. I, I like the amber just because not only does it make it easier for you to penetrate, but if I'm looking back, it's yeah. easy to see you. It's like, oh yeah, there he is. I may see a field of dust, but then I'll just <laughs> see a you know a glimmer of amber lights, which is pretty cool. And then inside the bumper, you've got uh, some KC lights as well. They're the G34s, I believe. Okay. Um, that went in with the bumper. Uh, as with Poison Spider, you can't really take out lights once you put the bumper on. So it, they've been in since day one. Okay. Cool. And now let's just talk about the lights you got up here. So you also have the flex lights up there. Yeah, so this is the flex light, uh, 50 inch bar up top. Uh, I got that one because at the time it was the highest output light from KC okay. for a light bar. Yeah, and super bright. I've yeah. seen this thing at night on the trail. It puts out a lot of light. It does, it, it really turns it into daylight for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, the two additional uh, ambers up there are wired in with this um, 
front amber light. Okay. It's just for more visibility. Yeah. Sometimes the dust gets really thick down low and it's just nice to have it in two different areas. No, I like it. And that's not something you normally see, but I really like it, especially at night when you're out on the trail. I think it's a cool little look, so cool. That's it pretty much for the exterior. Uh, can we pop the hood and see what you've done underneath? Sure. All right, now you've got the 3.6 liter stock. Yep. Yes. Uh, pretty happy with the motor? Yeah, uh, it, it's provided enough power, torque everywhere we've ever been. So yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with, everyone says it, the eight-speed transmission, yeah. but love the motor. Yeah, it, the eight-speed transmission is really nice. I, I can only hope that someday they come out with a conversion for the JK, because that's something I'll be doing, because it does really help this motor along. Now, uh, no superchargers or turbochargers for you, huh? No, I've uh, heard a friend of mine say that they uh, just trust the Jeep engineers to get them home, right. so I kind of do the same thing. Yeah, okay. But you have done a few mods under here to kind of help with some of your accessories and yeah, all that I have. stuff. What do you got? Uh, so the first thing I did was the Genesis uh, dual battery system. Okay. So you actually pull out factory battery, and in the JL there's a smaller battery underneath for that start-stop feature. Yep. Um, by removing that, you're able to drop a, their custom tray in and put both batteries in and free up some room in here. Okay. Um, once I did that, um, I wired in an S-Pod Bantam. So there's a Bantam S-Pod in here with the HD switch inside. Right. Um, and that's running all your accessories. Everything is run off of that. So you, Now you have the Mopar access, uh, switches in your Jeep as I well? I do. I have the four switches there also. Are you running anything off of those? Currently, no. Okay. I, I've gone between the two. I've put some on the S-Pod, put some there, um, but I've moved everything to the S-Pod currently. I've yeah. got some things in the future I'm working on, so. Uh-oh, well, yeah. let's talk about that in a bit. And then I also added the KC under lights here, so I'd be able to see uh, under the hood when you're working. Yeah, what, what I like, Josh, and, and this was something that we talked about a long time ago, you inspired me a little bit, is your wiring is really clean. You've got the nice braids all over everything. It just keeps it really clean. I've actually went and bought some of this stuff for my Jeep because of you. Uh, it looks really good, man. You've done a great job in here. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of hours in working on it. Yeah, but you know, having a clean wiring system that's safe and uh, it looks good, it's, it's important. So, yeah. Cool. Let's uh, talk tires and suspension. Okay. So, Josh, I love the stance of your Jeep where it is now, but it's been an evolution over the short period of time you've had it. Let's talk about wheels and tires. The JL Ninja Link comes with 33s, but you upgraded twice since then. What did you do? I have. Um, so they came with the 33s. I like the ride of the KO2s. I went to 35s okay. pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, ha had those for four or five months and then knew I wanted to go more aggressive with some other things on the Jeep. So I had to actually upgrade my wheel to get some backspacing. And uh, when I went to the 37s, and these are the KM3s. So right after they came out, I went to them and I've loved them ever since. And uh, these are the Method 701 wheels that have gone on here with the bead grip technology. Okay. I knew I didn't want to go full bead lock, Yeah. but I wanted something to make me feel better when airing down. So that's the route I went. Right, now let me ask you, when you first got the Jeep, did you think you were gonna get 37s or was that something that just came later? No, it was just watching other people do silly things. Yeah, okay. are you happy with them? I absolutely am. Yeah, how do you like the, the ride on, on the road? Is it noisy? It's not noisy, it's not much, noisier than the KO2s at all. Okay. Um, I, I have other things on the Jeep that produce more noise than <laughs> right. tires. Yeah. Um, and so, but I love the feel. And then when we're on trail, you, they're just amazing. Yeah, air them down, you yeah. got plenty of traction, no worries. Yeah, very sticky. Okay, cool. And how many miles do these have on them? About 12,000 miles. Okay, so holding up really well. Yeah, holding up very well. Okay. Uh, now, you went from 35s to 37s. Your lift also made the similar transformation. Tell us about that. It did. So I first started with the two inch Mopar lift, okay. uh, Fox shocks, loved the ride of it. It was great for the first few months I had it. As I started adding other things, the handling just became a little uh, less than desirable. And so I went and upgraded to the metal cloak three and a half inch game changer. And um, at the same time, we upgraded to the remote reservoir King shocks, adjustable, fully adjustable reservoirs. Yeah. So you had the, the stock lift, which was one of the first lifts to come out. I mean, it came out right with the Jeep, right? It did. But you started throwing a little bit of weight on here, yeah. made it a little tough to manage that, right? It did. Okay, now with this suspension and the adjustable shocks, where you said the setting's right at the middle, is that where you like it? When we're loaded out on trail, yeah, pretty much the front will be in the middle, the rear will be a little bit stiffer, okay. um, just because of the extra weight back there. Yeah, you happy with the ride on road? Uh, very much so. Yeah. 
and then off-road. I've seen you hauling a little <laughs> bit through the desert having some fun. I yeah. think I might have you on camera almost jumping a little bit. Maybe. Maybe. Allegedly. Yeah, but uh, the, it, it does perform well. It does. Okay, uh, let's talk about the steering because you've upgraded quite a bit of stuff in your steering. What I have did. you done? Uh, I put the complete package uh, from Steer Smarts under there, drag link, tie rod, uh, track bar, and on my uh, drag link, I put the uh, version with the attenuator in it. Yeah. And um, I think it was one of the very first, if not second, on the JL. Yeah. Uh, so I've been able to give them some good feedback and absolutely amazing. Uh, you can steer with one finger in there on trail, off trail. It's, yeah. it's done a great job. Steer Smarts makes some really good beefy quality stuff. And to, to do all three, it's that's just insurance for yeah. a long time. You don't have to worry about that, is. which is nice. Yeah. Uh, axles, have you done anything with the axles? Haven't done any regearing of any kind. Okay. Uh, I definitely plan to in the yeah. future. But thankfully um, you got the eight-speed transmission helps a little bit, but 37s, it's yeah. time to start thinking about it. What do you think you're gonna go to? I'm thinking about going either the 488s or 513s. Yeah, I think 488s would be fine, but with the extra weight, sometimes the 513 will give you that little extra yeah. back to normal, which would be good. Uh, and you do have some diff covers on there? I do. I put the Moto Built diff covers on. They're solid, beefy, no yeah. problems. Went right on, very simple installation. Right. Now, look, you've had this on some pretty good trails, yeah. uh, and you've added some armor down to there to give you a little peace of mind. What do you have? So I've got the full skid package from uh, Metal Cloak, okay. all the way front to rear, covers pretty much the entire belly. You could slide on it if you want to. Yeah. And did you install that yourself? I did. Uh, easy to install? I've Yeah, it was very easy. Okay. You know, that's a good question to ask because I know the answer to this, but you install almost all of this yourself. I have installed everything. Everything. This is yeah. all you, you don't do it to a shop. So, no. uh, and is there anything here that's been really challenging? Has it all been pretty easy to install? Uh, the lift by myself yeah. was a little challenging, but ratchet straps and just taking your time and being safe right. got the job done. But you were able to do it by yourself. Yep. Cool. Uh, all right, let's talk about some exterior stuff. These, uh, these fenders are really solid. What do you got? Yeah, these are just the steel metal cloak um, I believe they're called the Overland Fenders, okay. is what they call them, front and rears. And they got the little lights up in the front. They do, you can keep the JL lights, which I, that was one thing I really wanted. I didn't want to give up that light, yeah. given that that kind of identified a JL a little bit. Right. And um, they were the first to come out with it that I liked, okay. so I went with that. And uh, got some good clearance. Yeah. Uh, steel over aluminum, Any? Uh, are you happy with the steel? I'm happy with the steel. I can stand on it, I can beat it up, it, it doesn't hurt it. As I've grown in building, I've decided, you know, I, I'm looking to the future of possibly lightening up some things, maybe going yeah. to aluminum on a few things. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> My Jeep's heavy. <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk about the rock sliders. What do you got? So the sliders are rock slide engineering okay. and they're their step sliders. Yeah. Uh, I do have two uh, daughters and they were younger when I first started. And so them getting in and out of 33s, then 35s, and all of a sudden 37s has been a little challenging. So I did put the step in there. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people are running those rock sliders. They're really nice. Um, have you beat them up much? You know, actually, I had a guest driver who will remain unnamed <laughs> that uh, dropped this one on a ledge. And so there's a little bend in there. It does have the optional um, rock slider that you can put on them. I've just never thought I was actually going to beat them up and never yeah. installed it, so it sits in my garage. Okay, well, I think there's plenty of potential beating up in the future of this. We've got some trips planned coming Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Okay, uh, let's uh, hop up and talk about your rooftop tent and a couple other things. Let's do it. All right, now we get to get into some of the fun overlanding stuff, which is something you're really passionate about. You like camping and cooking and all that stuff, right? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about the roof rack. What do you have and why did you go with this one? Okay, I wanted to go with the Rhino Rack platform rack, uh, but they didn't have out the backbone system yet, okay. and Maximus 3 had their mounting, and it actually allows for a little bit more uh, static weight Okay. Um, per their specs. 900 pounds static, 300 dynamic. Oh, that's a lot. It's a lot of weight, and so I knew there may be times I have the kids, whoever, um, up there and it would be more than just uh myself right now that that rack system is is mounted on top of the roll bars which gives you that added strength it Isn't does that right? it goes through the you do have to drill yeah um i got over that after you yelled at me enough times so I, drilled, <laughs> I went ahead and drilled through and it does mount to the roll bar yeah drilling your top is never an easy no. thing to do but then you realize you know what i can repair this yeah me too it's not that big a deal yeah, it's just fiberglass yeah so the the roof rack has a lot of accessories um, but the biggest accessory that you've got on here is your rooftop tent. Tell us about it. It is. It's the uh, Generation 1. I 
camper sky camp okay king size mattress inside so it, it could sleep the entire family right there's probably three inch uh, memory foam in there it's been very comfortable um, it's warm in the winter we were in the snow up yeah. in Mojave yep. they do have an inside liner you put in it um, that builds a heat barrier uh, it's just it's been a great tent yeah I, I've, it's super fast to set up super fast yeah, yeah. and take down it's it's just been an, an amazing tent I'd buy it over again yeah for sure and fabric and everything's holding up well yeah okay latches are all good yep okay yeah it's a great tent I, I like the hard shell but man watching you set up this morning I, I don't think I've actually paid close attention to you setting it up until today I was like well that really went up super fast it's yeah. really nice it does yeah Okay, uh, and then you've got an awning. Tell us about that. Awning is the Rhino Rack Batwing 270 awning. Yeah. Um, it just provides a huge space underneath to be able to hang out or to get away in the shade yeah. uh, or to protect you from rain. Right, we've been there. We have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now it, it is a big uh, awning and it does. it's pretty heavy, but boy, I'll tell you, when you're out in the desert and you want some shade, yep. or when it's raining and you want a little protection, it, it really is nice to have. It is. Yeah. Uh, you've got your shovel mounted on the side there. Yep. Uh, get much use out of that guy? Not for digging holes. Yeah. <laughs> Not getting you stuck much. <laughs> no. No. Okay. And now you got to tell everybody, what is this big tank on the back of it? On the back is a road shower four. Okay. Um, I've actually used it as a shower a couple times when we've been out, but yeah. the majority of the time it's for washing dishes. Just having pressurized water, that's the big thing I wanted to be able to just hook an air hose to it, yeah. pressurize it, and have water on demand. Now how much water does that hold? That one is the medium size, so it holds seven gallons. Okay. They have a 10 and they have a four, but okay. it kind of went in the middle. All right, now when, you t when we're out on trips, uh, is that your only water source? Uh, I have a couple other roto packs full of water, okay. and then I generally have a couple gallons of drinking water inside. Okay, so you don't use that for drinking, that's just for <laughs> showers and Showers cleaning, and cleaning. Right? Yeah, but it's nice having it up and out of the way. Uh, cool. All right, well let's hop in the back and let's see what you got in the rear. All right. Okay, before we talk about all the kitchen magic back here, because I know you love to cook, uh, let's talk about the bumper. What do you have? So this is an LOD off-road bumper. They're based out of the Midwest. This is actually the second bumper I put on. Okay. Originally, I went with the Poison Spider uh, to match the front. Um, and as I was getting more and more into accessories and things of that nature, uh, LOD had one out that I saw had everything I wanted right away. Had the mounts for the roto packs, had the basket up top. There's a high lift mount. Uh, you can accessorize this in multiple different ways. You can put a power tank out back. You can put jerry cans, roto packs. They have a whole suite of accessories that bolt onto this carrier. And it's a swing arm carrier. I knew I wanted a swing arm carrier. So I went ahead and this, like I said, this is the second version of this. And I've been really happy with it so far. The, the arm does not vibrate. It doesn't shake doesn't okay. make lots of noise yeah. it's you, awesome. got, you got quite a bit of weight on here but it's holding up good there is a okay. lot of weight uh you also got a little chase light back there i do probably one of the favorite things on the jeep and it's been really good on the trail i wired mine in a little different than most people i actually just wired mine to the seven pin trailer hitch wiring okay and everything wired straight up clean and it works with everything as I'm normal driving. Yeah, when your brakes come on, it comes on. But yep. then you have the ambers and the reverse lights. Are the reverse lights on the Yeah, reverse lights are as well? the same, yep. Okay. So they come on with the trailer. When I put it in reverse, they come on. All right, but your amber is, yep. is on the controller. Yep, I have a controller wire for the amber and the flashing ambers. Gotcha, okay. All right, uh, talk to me about what you've got in the back here. You got a pretty good setup. It's organized for you, so. What do you got? Most days it's organized. <laughs> so uh, in the back, I've got my all my air tools uh, for airing down and re-airing up. I've got the dual or the twin ARB compressor. It's side mounted in here. Okay. Are you uh, happy with how that's mounted in there? I am. Okay. It's out of the way. It doesn't get dirty. I don't have to worry about it breaking down on me. Uh, it's been it's been a good it's setup. Okay. Um, I've got that in there, and I've also got my fire extinguisher mounted to the uh, roll bar back there. A fire extinguisher is just one of those things you have to have because you never know when you're going to need it for yourself or for a buddy or whatever. Uh, outside here, you've got one of my favorite tailgate tables. This is the Outback Adventure Products table, right? Yes, it is. I love this table because it's uh, stainless steel, easy to clean. Yeah. The bamboo is really nice. It's it, it's a little pricey, but how do you like it? I love it. It's 
as advertised, does not rattle, squeak, yeah. make any noise, and it's been very sturdy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I bought mine, I was a little hesitant. I was like, ah, it's kind of expensive. It's a lot of money. Uh, but I think it really is the best table. It's a good investment. All right, talk us through some of your camping gear and stuff. What do you have for a fridge? Uh, this is the Dometic 40 that I've got in here. Okay. Uh, on some of our adventures, I've got the Dometic Dual Zone 75, just depending on how long of a trip we're going to go on. Yeah. But this is the one that I carry most of the time with me. Yeah. Uh, love it so far. Yeah. yeah it's Dometic. That, it's good product. That's 75. Yeah. The first time I saw that, I was like, dude, that thing is huge back there. Yeah. It took up the whole back, yeah. I think. But you like to cook and you like to have yeah. some good food. So that's... And we had ice cream. So... And we did have ice cream. I will never forget <laughs> that time when we when you decided to, we baked that cookie yep. on the campfire yeah and then you pull that ice cream i was like come on yeah. where am i right now that was cool it was dude. awesome uh, okay talk to me about um like you're pretty organized with these uh these, these are front runner boxes front runner yep front runner boxes um one of the first things i grabbed when camping um, i have a total of six of them i'll generally carry three i mix and match um, i'll keep one for dry goods like a pantry okay um, i'll keep one with my cooking supplies knives plates all that stuff yeah. and then one with uh, cleanup supplies okay um toiletries things like that yeah um, and so then all my perishables go in the fridge and it seems for a really good setup. Yeah, it is pretty organized back here. I like the boxes because they stack and they secure really nice and they seem pretty durable. You've been using these pretty, pretty... Every trip out, I've beaten them up and um, they've got multiple tie down points on them. I would say over time I would love to have them dust proof, yeah. but there's a trade off and so I'm, I'm good with the way they are now. Okay. Uh, and you do have the Tempo Test Scottle. How do you like that thing? I do. I, I've had it for just a couple months now yeah. um, and converting to cooking on it is relatively easy yeah um, I have not mastered it as some of the guys we know Marco <laughs> Marco but uh, but no I love it it's, it's really easy to cook on easy to clean yeah single item don't have to pull out pots pans and everything else right I, I really like it yeah I really like the scottle I think it's a great option I know I've watched Marco cook some masterpieces yeah. on there and I've seen you cook some really good meals so I'm excited to see what you do with that so very cool man I, I, it's a good setup back here let's hop in the interior I, I want to talk about some of the cool tech you got up there all right all right, Josh, you've got a great setup in here. It's a very cool cockpit setup. Talk us through some of the things that you've done and what you like about it. Sure. For me, it all started with the uh, vector full width bar. I wanted to be able to put something in that didn't require a lot of modifications to the Jeep. I don't really feel like cutting up a brand new vehicle at the yeah. time. So it bolted straight in. Um, it was one of the first full width bars out there. Yeah. It's super solid, doesn't let things move around. Um, you can mount it at so many different points. If, you, if I wanted to add something for a passenger, or just so many options. Yes, yeah, pretty and modular. Very, very modular. I connected it to the 67 Designs uh, mounts for the most part, uh, other than the iPad is on a RAM mount. Okay. And it keeps everything within arm's reach. I don't have to move a lot to grab or to move or to monitor anything. Right, okay, so what iPad are you running? This is a full-size iPad, actually. What uh, What's your favorite app that you use on there when we're off-road? It's always Gaia. Gaia. It just has been. Um, I, I flip between it and EarthMate for a little bit because okay. I do have a Garmin inReach that I connect to some stuff when we get really far out there. Yeah. Uh, but Gaia seems to work great. Okay. Any vibration from the iPad when you're on the trail? If it's the trails we're on, mm. you get some sometime, but it, it's not unbearable or anything like that. Okay, and then you've got your 67 Designs phone mount. You're pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's my favorite yeah, mount. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And you've got your ham radio head unit here. What do you got? Uh, this is the Yesu 7900 dual band, and it's got the uh, removable uh, remote faceplate. Okay. And so the main unit is actually mounted down here in the passenger footwell up against the side. Faceplate's up here. Mic's in reach. Yeah. Uh, it's great. And you've got the antenna mounted on your hood, and you get some pretty good range with this thing. Yeah, it's, it's surprisingly well. We've been pretty far apart when chatting out there. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know, I think ham radio is a great way to communicate. You do have to go through the process of getting your license. You do. It wasn't that hard, though. It was not at all. Not I studied, did the same day test, uh, maybe 24 hours later. Right. Um, now, you do have uh, another uh, mobile ham radio on, what is this mount you got here? Uh, this is Jeep Unique. Great product, very easy, fits right on the, the grab bar here on the passenger side. And it, it, I liked it because it has a dual system. You can drop the just the hand mic on it or a full actual clip mount for uh, numerous 
handheld. So you just tell them what brand you have and they build it for you. Yeah, I've got the same setup. I love it. It's very convenient. Yeah. Uh, especially for me when I'm hopping in and out and need to grab the radio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk to us about the S-Pod button switch you got up there. S-Pod, this is the HD switch mount plate that they have. And I mounted it to the Carolina Metal Masters ball mount that they have for the JL. Um, I've got one on both sides just in case passenger wants to uh, throw something up there. Uh, super sturdy. It's been, uh, I really like the placement of this. It's very easy to grab all my buttons. And I've got eight things up here wired in already. What do you got? Talk us through it. All right, so I've got my underhood lights. Uh, I've got the air compressor in the back. I've got my ham radio, or as I call it, my race radio, because we're always racing in the desert, right? <laughs> uh, I've got my flashing uh, ambers in the rear. I've got my solid ambers in the rear. I have uh, my dust lights up front mm -hmm. and then my 50 inch KC light bar up top, as well as I do have some cyclones underneath. Um, they are blue randomly, but, um, and so I, I call them snake lights just because I love snakes so much. <laughs> yeah, that's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my rock lights mounted or, or wired in up here also. Nice. What's this little button you've got at the top here? So this button here comes with the Genesis system. It's an option. It's called a G-Screen monitoring system. And what it does is it allows me to monitor both battery levels as well as if I press and hold, it'll join both batteries. If for some reason I were to have killed my primary battery, I can press and hold and self-jump my uh starter off of the other battery nice well it's a good setup in here are you pretty happy with everything yeah i love it anything you can change always it's a jeep <laughs> okay you've done a lot to this jeep what's the favorite thing you've done all of them uh-huh yeah. no i gotta pick one buddy um if i have to pick one it's got to be suspension why um for me it, it really defines kind of the look of the jeep um i can pull all the camping gear off of it and I can still have an amazing vehicle very capable get out do some trails as well as it just kind of looks cool okay so right. you know, the stance does look awesome yeah. okay what's next for me uh, I really want to get in the back of the Jeep and clean up a lot of the kitchen uh, whether it's going with some type of a goose gear platform some uh, drawers pull outs things of that nature uh, you and Marco have really inspired me to want to clean that all up yeah I don't know about me my kitchen is really not much <laughs> of a kitchen peanut butter and jelly most of the time all right so. well let's just to be honest it's Marco, Marco right yeah, yeah for sure okay uh you've been on some great adventures on this uh what's been your favorite trail favorite trail due to this being more of an expedition vehicle I would have to go with Mojave Road yeah it gives you so many different uh, things to do whether it's technical whether it's just some awesome scenery some killer camping spots yeah. and you can explore on little day runs off to yeah. the side There's a lot of stuff to explore out there yeah there's a lot of rich history yeah. on there mm -hmm. and, and i'm with you it's not it's not super hard it's no. easy it's yeah. uh, you get a little bit of an endurance to go across but man there's just so much to see and going through the joshua tree forest is, uh, I love yeah it back there it's gorgeous okay uh where do you want to take this thing what trail is on the bucket list I've got two in mind, but if I have to choose one, there's a wilderness road up in Idaho called the Magruder Pass. Uh, it's got some crazy history to it. You can read about it online and everything, but uh, it, it's a tough, tough road. Like take chainsaws to cut things out of your way. Like okay. it's a wilderness road yeah. and the scenery up in the Idaho and it goes all the way into Montana. So I've always wanted to go to Montana. Yeah. I think that would be a killer way to get there. Oh man, that sounds like an amazing adventure. Yeah. Okay, good to go. All right, uh, look, uh, this is a beautiful build, but it's not your only build. You recently bought a Gladiator. We've been out on the trail. Just tell everybody a little bit, what's the plan for the Gladiator? Do I have to tell you everything? <laughs> okay, not everything. All right, so the Gladiator is gonna be a pure expedition vehicle. Um, it's gonna be for long range, it's gonna be that stuff. So um, I've been really researching and doing some mods that I, I the biggest thing i'm going to do is from a little company out of australia called patriot okay so we'll just have to see what happens right. but they're they're involved we'll have to check you way. we'll have to check back in with you yeah. but okay so two overland vehicles but a little bit different uh, capabilities yeah. and stuff with them right yeah okay cool well i'm excited for uh that build and i'm excited to get out on the trail with you again in this one buddy thanks for taking the time today coming out here and uh and chatting with us on camera and sharing with the viewers uh your jeep it's awesome dude it's always a pleasure i always. can't wait till we hit the trail again absolutely Hey guys, if you have not visited Josh's Instagram, I'm going to leave a link down below. Make sure you go check that out. If you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.